Hey, all my Libra friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Terry Hunter. I'm an intuitive astrologer, and I'm here today with your August 2024 monthly horoscope. These horoscopes are based on whole sign Western astrology. So when I'm talking about Libra, I'm talking about Libra rising as dictating the landscape of the chart. This is also applicable to Libra sun and Libra moon. And if you have three or more personal planets in the sign of Libra, this video is for you as well. When I refer to a day and a time, it's uh, based on the Pacific time zone. So please adjust for your location. Um, the month starts off, I think, uh, revealing a bit of a theme. And that theme for me is this square and a half between Jupiter and Pluto. Pluto is playing a major role in the background. It's almost like elevator music or Muzak when you walk into a store. You may not be conscious of it, but it is there and it is prevalent. This square and a half for me um, how I think of a square is usually like a fork in the road, two choices, you know, sort of uh, uh, the difference between a habitual way of being and a, a way I want to assert in my life. Now, when I add that half square, there's something behind it that I can't see. And Pluto kind of uh, reaffirms that for me because Pluto holds the energy of a deep psychological imprint that we make our decisions upon, but we are not always aware of it. Uh, it could be fear. It could be trepidation. It could be feeling powerless. It could be insecure about our skills. Um, it, but whatever it is, it's a challenging point. Now, Jupiter here represents our uh, belief system. It represents our religious beliefs, um, ideologies, philosophies. It rules higher education. Obviously, it rules travel, foreign people, foreign places. By nature, it's diverse and very culturally focused. Um, it also rules business, marketing, branding, publishing, writing. Here we have it in Gemini, and Gemini is your ninth house, Libra. Um, and this is really its natural house but it's in detriment in its most uh, furthest place from its home. And at the same time, Jupiter is again, a world traveler. So here Jupiter is re-examining the belief systems, how I run my everyday life, how my mind works, you know, what do I focus on? What do I concentrate on? And it may be a bit challenging because Jupiter keeps stretching for bigger concepts. And yet in this position, it's really about examining the details of things, the getting down into you know, the valley, as they say, Jupiter can represent the time on the mountaintop where you're contemplating the big, you know, philosophical point of life. And here Jupiter's getting to uh, look at something a little bit different. Look at some, looking at the human structure as it runs and then assessing, you know, sort of this creating balance within that dynamic, the ebb and the flow. Um, and so this is going to be a running theme throughout the month. We're going to see Mars coming into a tighter and tighter conjunction, ultimately uh, exact, and then moving on throughout the month. We're also going to see a growing square between Jupiter and Saturn. The first of three that we'll experience, uh, we will have the second in December and then the third in January. So this is very powerful. Another thing that's going on here, um, well, I'm going to wait for that. I'll tell you that in a minute. So this is how the, 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 the month starts. It also starts with Mercury in your 12th house stationing to go retrograde back into your 11th house of hopes, dreams of large social groups like the World Wide Web. Um, and of course, in overlaying your own personal uh, enjoyment, pleasure, fun, and self-expression there. Uh, so this is kind of how the month starts with this, these, this bit of tension uh, with a bit of feeling like um, something's laying underneath the surface, but I can't put my finger on it to figure out what it is. And I think it's going to reveal itself. Let's go to the fourth. This is a pretty big day, Libra, in that we, it starts off at 4.13 a.m. with a new moon in Leo. And this is, again, your 11th house. We see this new moon is making very uh, a nice uh, sextile to Jupiter 
and uh, somewhat Mars. This is giving us an opportunity to lay the groundwork, to start to really plant the seeds in connection with my soul, with, with what is going on inside of me. Um, I think that 12th degree of the new moon is that Piscean energy. I think this is really about starting to realize that we are souls inhabiting a physical experience versus physical people hoping we have a soul. And we also see uh, this quincunx here from Venus to Neptune and then from Venus to Pluto, which for me is like a transit yod. If you were born with this aspect, it would actually be a yod, the finger of God. We felt, Mercury felt this in the end of uh, July as Mercury transited into your 12th house. And then Mercury here now is stationing. It's going to go uh, retrograde later on in the day. And Venus will move into Virgo where she's in her fall, where she's a little challenged. But here there is a focus here on how am I thinking? How is, what is my self-worth? What do I think about my skills? How do I perceive my, the possibilities for me in this lifetime and enjoying myself while feeling like I am contributing? Leo is a sign of leadership. The, the main aspects that Leo rules is the courage of the heart to express its individuality. And here, I believe that, um, Neptune is really speaking to the divinity within you, and Pluto is speaking to the psychological imprint that has been superimposed upon you that may hold you back from that very expression. And the focal point God is offering you is an opportunity to create balance. We see that Venus, as she moves into Virgo, is going to start to want to put practical solutions into uh, that, that very expression of herself. And sometimes that practicality is connecting with our divinity before we actually start to take human action. Mercury here. Uh, let's go to also, was there one other thing I wanted to say? Okay, so this is this is just the beginning of the day. We all, you know, some of us have not even opened our eyes and all of this is going on. Let's go to towards the end of the day. We're going to go to 10 p.m. and we'll see that Venus is now at zero degrees of Virgo. And she is the literally uh, the apex of this, this yod. And it's also making a square to Uranus because somewhere she's concerned about how, you know, Taurus rules our family history. It rules the confidence that we have as individuals based on our childhood upbringing and support and encouragement. We see that uh, Pluto was is here making you know an aspect to Venus. Pluto naturally rules the eighth house, so there's a sense of power and control about how other people. Um, sometimes people have power over us because either they are our client and we get our money from them, or they're a parent and we're going to inherit something, or we they're our partner or a lover and we ha intermingle our bodies and that gives them power over us. There's something going on here that is looking asking Libra to look at where there is unconscious power over you that is holding you back. And this is what the square to, to Uranus is indicating, that there's a tension of some kind. And it could be because, you know, we love the people that we come from most of the time, and we may differ from them at the same time, and that might be creating a sense of tension. I also think it's kind of interesting here that as Venus, I mean, as Mercury retrogrades, the moon is really um, here in Leo, kind of adding a little bit of emotion to this whole thing. So we're looking at our emotional body, we're looking at our self-worth and we're looking at our mind um, and they're all in play here at, on this day. And, and I wanna offer this because this first four days of the month is so powerful and it is a bit of a continuation from the end of July. But to me, these two things are, are setting, these aspects of the first week are setting the tone for the month. We see that Mars is currently, give me my cursor, where are you, <laughs> um, is here in your uh, ninth house, and there's a growing conjunction here. And this, to me, is also representing the outside world. We know that 
uh, right now the Supreme Court and and the, the judicial system is being looked at due to the United States election year. And people will be very, very passionate about their beliefs. They will go to the mat, potentially fighting over it. So this is also uh, this growing conjunction has a, a polarizing effect. Those standing in awareness could take great advantage of this and be aware of their mind and how they interact and implement diplomacy. Um, and then at the same time, those there could be people who just say diplomacy to the wind, and I'm going to tell you exactly what I think, and I don't care if you think I'm a blah, blah, blah. It, it's very, very tense. I don't know how else to say it. I can't sugarcoat it. We are... Um, we are about to go into a period of time when we're also going to, in the United States, experience um, political, um, the D Democratic National Convention will happen in a couple of weeks. I don't have the date, but I'm pretty sure that I'm headed that way astrologically right now. We're going to the 14th. I'm going to go back to 12 p.m. And we're really seeing here this, this very you know exact conjunction within five minutes these two planets are together. They are in an opposition to the moon at this time, which makes me feel even more passion, even more sense of uh, people being just over the moon about how they feel. And we see that this square and a half to Pluto is still in play. There's still this dynamic where um, you're feeling the energies around you. Aquarius is your fifth house. This is looking at like it's on the uh, right on the cusp of your fourth and fifth house. So this may also indicate that there are varying beliefs within one home or one situation. Or again, uh, the fourth house represents patriotism. It represents the country of origin. So that too may come into play. Even if you're somewhere else in the world, you may find that the politics of your country are somehow influencing your everyday life. We see that Pluto, I'm sorry, that Saturn and Jupiter are almost in the exact square, uh, but this is tight enough. So we see government control, we see authority, we see bosses here, leaders, but in a, in a more restrictive way, especially in, in this retrograde. This is where I believe Saturn is really uh, the bigger picture of Saturn retrograding in Pisces and being in Pisces at all is to create a strong foundation with your divinity within, with your team. We see quite a few T-squares in this uh, day and it just feels like it's riddled with, with um, challenges in and outside of myself. And Mercury has now retrograded to zero degrees, its second time being the apex of this yod, the finger of God saying, you know, what is your mind focused in on? Are you getting caught up in the everyday details in what you're hearing? Because this is a time discernment will really come from listening to the inner voice that says something doesn't sound exactly in alignment to myself. And, and we all have our individual beliefs. So this is not about at all going into a category, but rather much more going into the discernment of the individual. We see, I should go back, this trying to Chiron is offering individuality. This is in your seventh house. This is contractual partnerships as well as marriage partnerships, but it's also where Libra creates a sense of balance and peace. And your discernment, your individuality will help you filter through that. But again, we have this blind, these blind spots happening and we have the square to Uranus. So there could be that feeling of, you know, uh, not feeling that you can completely liberate yourself or what you think or disclose that because somebody else has some sort of influence over you that puts you in feeling a little bit compromised. I guess I want to put it that way. Um, Mercury is going to retrograde from the 4th to the 28th of the month. So this is a really powerful a retrograde, really reviewing how, what your hopes, your dreams, your desires are. This is again happening in your 11th and 12th house. And Mercury is going to, at the end of the month, visit that this um this finger of God again. And th at that point, I think conclusions will have been drawn that will be more clear for you. 
let's go to the full moon in Aquarius on the 19th. This is going to happen at 11.25 a.m. Pacific time. And I think this is really significant because there's a focal point of this full moon happens to be Uranus. We see that the sun is here at 27 degrees of Leo in opposition to the moon. They are both making a square to Uranus in your eighth house of transformation of other people of, um, you know, this is really where I think, you know, the eighth house is where criminal activity takes place. And I think that that's because the criminal, AKA, you know, that psychological dynamic that people can take advantage of. It's like, they know your weakness. So here there could very well be some feeling of unexpected, um, almost like something you thought was flat or something you thought was done revisits and it triggers some sort of family history. I say that also because Mercury retrograding is in conjunction with this, the sun here. So now I almost feel like the sun is reflecting on the moon and the moon is reflecting back how I'm thinking. And I really want to liberate myself from that, but I feel a little restrained. I feel anxiety about it. I'm not sure how it'll play out. And that's why I go back to the idea of this quincunx happening. Where is my quincunx? There it is. Um, between Neptune and the sun now, uh, Pluto and the sun. This is the third planet that's hit this point. So first we went Venus. I'm sorry. Ver first was Mercury in moving forward, how I think, how I speak, how I interact in my everyday life. Then Mercury went through that point a second time, but not before Venus did it. So Venus is now looking at how I make my money, how I work in my partnerships, how am I creating peace for myself? And now uh, this is in this full moon, there's some epiphany, but the epiphany feels as if it comes from some sort of individuality again. And that individuality could very well be going into your heart, going into your inner knowing and asking a big question. You know, did my soul really sign up for this for my detriment or did my soul sign up for, for my empowerment? And without a challenge, how would I ever experience that empowerment? And now that's evidenced during this full moon by Venus, your ruling planet, making her square over here to Jupiter. What do I believe? What's important to me? What do I, how do I feel a sense of value and a sense of enjoyment and a sense of contribution? Uh, contributing as an individual, Mars, the individual at the Libran degree. And then these planets are making a square to Saturn and Saturn is making an opposition to Venus. So we've got another T-square here. Old things coming back uh, to be revisited and the old things could very, you know, I don't ever think we really get rid of any of our challenges. I think they just go into transform into wisdom through awareness. And this may be that very opportunity that's before you is to transform it into wisdom versus trying to release it or forget about it or pretend it didn't exist. And that's a little shadow side of Libra uh, because Libra just wants everything to be, you know, copacetic all the time. Oh, always. But, but there is a purpose to challenge and to, to um, a little bit of strife. It hones our skills and it gives us a sense of accomplishment when we persevere through it. So I think that all will all come into our forefront. But I do think the exact T-square to Uranus is probably the primary energy that we're feeling. And then the secondary would be the T-square between Venus and uh, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. But both are just, it's like a one-two punch. And we went, the yod in, in the middle is all playing out. It's just layered and layered stuff. All right. So the sun is technically now on the 22nd, going to be exact on focal point of the yod. So we go back to 12 p.m. And we'll go to the 22nd. Um, and I, I just think this is very powerful because again, you know, how do I want to shine my light? We're looking at Virgo is your 12th house. It's an ancestral house where your soul uh, habits live. 
and the way that you think. So there could be inadvertently a lot of self-criticism for Libra because Virgo in its challenging area expects perfection, wants to constantly strive for something that's not attainable. Perfection is not attainable. And so here, I think there could be a focal point on your sense of your ego, um, how you assert yourself, how you feel about yourself in that assertion. Uh, do you feel strong or do you feel, uh, you know, like an imposter? That that can sometimes be. And I think that go as this focal point comes in, let me just click on the sun right now. I think this is where the challenge comes is from Pluto saying, you know, who, who really has power and dominion over you? Are you in control of your life? Meaning your viewpoint, because that's all we have control over. And then here is Neptune sort of offering the spiritual way of being because that 29 reduces down to an 11. So it's offering me an opportunity to connect with the law of attraction, to know that my thoughts are things and they bring that to me. And that's what I want to start to project. And maybe this is an opportunity to project self-acceptance for whatever flaws you have or whatever perceived flaws you have. We still see Mercury is in a square to Uranus. So there could be some anxiety. We also know that Mercury kind of represents in its lowest form, the monkey mind and Uranus represents the genius. And you may be fighting whether you think you're a genius or you're not. You know, you're just mundane. And I think if you stare at anything long enough, you can tear it apart. Now let's go to, we'll go quickly to the 20. I'm actually going to go to the 30th because at that point we'll see Venus has entered Libra and Mercury has gone direct. Um, Venus's entry into Libra, when she's at about zero degrees, she's starting a very tight conjunction with the um, super galactic center. And this is extremely powerful because the supergalactic center is a point where the soul through the physical experience uh, discovers itself as source energy. Literally, it is the, the, um, the ground zero, the, the apex of its own manifestations. And I think here, this is a really uh, great opportunity. It's still, we have an opposition to Neptune still, because I'm still feeling a bit of uh, unsuredness. You know, we have an air sign in the form of Libra want looking for intellect. And then here with Neptune in Pisces, we're really looking at nothing but water, emotions, and things that feel in uh, you can't hold on to. You can't hold water unless it's in a vessel. At this particular time, we also see that the moon is in an exact opposition to Pluto. And this could be, you know, a real emotional epiphany on some level. Again, the moon has just entered your 11th house. It is, you know, the house of self-expression, the house of fun, joy, pleasure, of, you know, social groups, you know, large social groups, people on the internet that, you know, interact uh, through various platforms of their personal interests. So there could be some interesting things coming up for you at this time. Uh, but more than anything, I think this idea that your ruling planet has now entered her rulership in your first house on the super galactic center gives you an awareness to start to implement and maybe even take time to connect with your divinity, with your inner voice, with your soul, with your angels, with God, and start to declare the things that make you feel peaceful, make you feel harmony, and make you feel a sense of vitality here on the planet. The South Node uh, is creeping up on the supergalactic center. Uh, and this is a point that's considered a point of erosion, a point where toxicity is released or we're asked to let go of something per se. And we see that the... Um, the North Node is in your seventh house, stretching for you to be an individual. You naturally rule the seventh house. So I think that this uh, approaching dynamic, because in any minute now, Venus is going to be conjunct the South Node. This is really an opportunity for you to be egoless to other people's opinions of maybe these new philosophies and perceptions that you have and giving yourself permission to root them in so that they can experience them from you versus you're telling them and it'll be more powerful. 
uh, that North node is really wanting an individual experience within its uh, partnerships, within its collaborations and cooperations. So it, it's a really, um, I think it's a really powerful month. I also think that the landscape of, of our neighborhoods and our communities is going to be very impassioned Libra. And you may personally, because you enjoy harmony so much, find this to be quite abrasive. And if so, then I think this is really a good opportunity for self-care and to be discerning with the people that you engage with. If they happen to be, you know, uh, rather powerful energies with big opinions and you find them to be a little bit overwhelming, give yourself a minute, you know, allow yourself maybe to step back a bit, you know, don't have to always pick up the phone when they, when someone calls and give yourself a little breathing room. I think it'll help you manage this month better. Okay, so that is it for me for the month of August 2024. Uh, again, my name is Terry Hunter. I'm an intuitive astrologer. If you'd like to book a reading with me, I am available. Just uh, reach out to me. My information is below in the description. Uh, please like, subscribe, share, and uh, comment. I appreciate everything, all of your, your support. And even sometimes when you're not supportive, I appreciate it because it helps me do my job better. I also want to invite you to join me on Sunday mornings live 11 a.m. Pacific time where uh, the tribe gets together and we look at the transits ahead and we do an angel reading and we pull a tarot card and get the angels advice for how to traverse those transits to their highest vibration. All right, everybody, I'll be back in September. Have a lovely August. Be safe, be kind to yourself, be loving to yourself. See you soon.